Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. I'm Monica and today I am kicking off my 2023 declutter series. I'm going to be doing a video where I declutter all my face stuff and then all my eye stuff and then all my lip stuff. And the idea of this particular series, it's pretty much always the idea, but especially this year or this season, I have been really wanting to just get rid of all the makeup that I don't use or I haven't used in a while or the ones that I just look at and it overwhelms me because I already have so much makeup. So this is going to be a declutter of me getting rid of things that I just need to get out of my life, out of sight, out of mind sort of thing. And this doesn't mean that some of the things that I'm decluttering I don't like or I don't love. It just means that I'm trying to kind of weed out the parts of my collection that I'm just not loving on as much anymore or the ones that I'm not even really using at all anymore. So today we're starting off with the face portion and it's a long one. So strap in, grab your coffee, tea, wine, whatever you want to. And we're just going to go through every single one of my face items. And the idea is to get rid of about half of my collection overall. So that's what we're going to do. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the face portion of this declutter series. So these are the drawers we are tackling today for face makeup. So much stuff I cannot wait to get rid of. We've got a decent amount of things in here I'm hoping to get rid of too. I'm really hoping that this declutter is going to help me just really get rid of most of this stuff, honestly, uh, if not at least half, because there's just too much going on. I can't, I can't even deal with it. And my personality is very anti-clutter and this is very cluttered. So I'm really excited to fix this. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this all out. I think we're gonna start with like foundation, go to concealer, powder, bronzer, blush, highlight sort of in that kind of order probably. All right, so I've got all my foundations laid out here and so I can already tell you that the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear, which is up here, I've got six backups of my regular shade, which is 420, and then one of my self-tan shade, which is 460. I'm gonna keep all of these. This is my favorite foundation. I would never declutter. I go through every one of these. That's why I have so many backups. So I'm gonna keep these. And then these two right here, this is the L'Oreal Tree Match Nude. I have it in my fair shade and my self-tan shade. And um, these I'm gonna keep because I do really enjoy this formula. I do think it's a little dry, so I typically probably would reserve it for the summer. I do have pumps on them, which I will link down in the description box down below if you do like this foundation but hate the packaging like I did. So I'm gonna keep both of these because I think the formulation is amazing and I do truly love this foundation. And then we've got the House Lab foundation. I've got it in my self-tan shade and my fair shade and I love this foundation. The performance of this foundation is identical to the performance of the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear. Uh, the the formulas are not the same in ingredients, uh, like ingredient wise, but I do think that this is a wonderful, wonderful foundation and I love it. So I'm definitely going to be keeping both of these. I promise we're getting to decluttering uh, the foundations here in a second. So this is the L'Oreal True Match, the original like True Match, but it's been slightly reformulated and the colors, like the shade range has slightly changed. This is N2, which is neutral light. This used to be like my perfect shade match when I had, like when I have my fair skin and not my self tan splotchy skin that I have right now. I promise this looked better a couple days ago. But because this isn't the perfect match, what I'm gonna do is declutter this shade because it's too light, makes me look a little ghostly. And I'm going to get the right shade because I do actually love this formula even more than I used to. The formula has changed for the better in my opinion and it has great coverage without being too heavy or anything like that. So I'm going to declutter this but I'm gonna get a different shade. All right, so here we have the Catrice True Skin Foundation. I love this foundation, but sadly, I think I'm gonna to have to declutter it because I'm pretty sure it breaks me out. Um, I have it in two different shades here, which is Neutral Sand, which is this shade, my self tan shade, and Neutral Porcelain, which is my fair skin shade. But every time I wear this, my skin gets so clogged and I break out. And that's really sad for me because I love the True Skin Concealer, but this, this is not the first Catrice foundation that has ever broken me out, so it's not totally shocking or anything. It's just really sad, but I am going to declutter both of these. So then we have the Kosas Revealer Foundation. This is also too light, like in terms of comparing it to my fair skin, 
But um, aside from that, I just think the formula is pretty mediocre. Like, I don't get it. Um, and I know that Kosas, like, doesn't really use any pre preservatives, so it can go bad pretty quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this on to somebody who could possibly use it before it goes bad, because I don't really like the formula. Um, I think it emphasizes my texture and kind of clings to dry patches and just overall isn't worth the money. So then we have the Revlon Illuminance Foundation. I actually tried this in my Foundation 5 series uh, that went up a couple months ago, and I love it. This is a great foundation. It's so beautiful. It has a terrible smell, but it does dissipate. But I definitely am keeping this foundation because it's beautiful. It's got like light to light medium coverage. You can sort of get it up to medium and it looks so beautiful on the skin. So definitely keeping this one. Then we've got the uh, Neutrogena Sensitive Skin Serum Foundation. I wanted to love this. I had high hopes for it. I love like the thought process behind this, like kind of like your skin, but better. But sadly for me, this fell pretty short. I didn't think it was the worst foundation ever, but I don't find myself reaching for it at all. And every time I do force myself to like use it, I just don't love the outcome. So I'm definitely going to be decluttering this. So then we have the Essence Keep Me Covered Foundation. This shade match is good. Like it's a good shade match for my face, which is lighter than the rest of my body. So it makes me look kind of Caspery. And besides that, I don't love the formula. I think it's an okay foundation. I think it's a solid foundation for like $6, but I, I don't love the shade anyway, and I don't find myself reaching for this. For that and just the formula in general, I think it can be a beautiful formula, but it's just not the most beautiful on my skin. <laughs> if that makes any sense, I know a lot of people love this, but I'm just not one of those people who's obsessed with it. And because of the shade range and the reasons I've already stated with the formula, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and declutter this and maybe somebody else will like it. So then we have the Clinique Even Better Clinical Serum Foundation. This has SPF 25. I bought this uh, because I like that Clinique is fragrance free, but I bought this like a year and a half ago and used it maybe five days total. And I just don't love it. I think the bottle's cool. Like I like the teardrop shape and everything, but I just don't love the formula. I don't think it's anything special at all. And honestly, I can make my skin look better with things that are much cheaper. And so I'm going to go ahead and pass this on. Maybe somebody else will like it. So then we have the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. I love this foundation, recommended it uh, when the Sephora sale was happening. And I think it's really beautiful. It's got like medium coverage. You can build it up to almost full and somewhat moussey like texture, but is so beautiful and very light on the skin like it doesn't have a heavy feel at all so i'm definitely keeping this one of my favorite high-end foundations along with the house labs one and then we have the makeup forever hd skin this was like the release last year that replaced the original formula and i know a lot of people love this i however was not one of them it broke me out i haven't reached for it since so i'm gonna go ahead and declutter it i just don't think it's that great all right so we've got the nyx bear with me blur foundation i tried this honestly it reminds me a lot of this like, these two are very, very similar to each other. And so let's tackle them together. Um, let's just get to the punchline. I'm not keeping either one of these. They're too heavy for me. They're way too matte. I think back in 2016 when I had, like, oilier skin and the matte look was more in than it is, now I probably would have liked this. But now I'm much more into, like, the natural look on the skin in terms of like what my foundation look gives and so i don't like either one of these for that um i think if you had oily skin maybe you could get away with these but for me it just these both emphasize every part of my face that i'm already insecure about so i'm gonna get rid of both of them all right so we've got the essence pretty natural foundation if you know you know i love this i cannot tell if it's discontinued or not it's not really available on ulta anymore but when you go to essence's website it didn't used to be there but now it's back so i don't know what's going on with this but i'm definitely going to keep these because it's like my second favorite drugstore foundation after the l'oreal infallible fresh wear i think it is so beautiful and it's like six dollars if you're able to find it wherever you are. <laughs> so this is the Typology Tinted Serum. This is in type two, which actually I think might work for my self tan that I've got sort of going on right now. Oh my gosh, look at that line. <laughs> That's so unattractive. I love this. This I love more than I thought I would. I think it's beautiful and I'm obsessed with it and I wanna pick it up in the lightest shade too. Um, so I think I'm gonna do that, but I'm definitely gonna keep it. It's got more coverage than you would think, like light to medium coverage and really just evens out your skin and everything going on. It's not like full coverage, so it doesn't cover everything, but it, it, it really does even out your skin tone and it has the most beautiful like gel texture, which I adore. So then we've got the uh, Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint. I liked this for a minute, but I haven't reached for it and I tried it recently and wasn't wowed by it. I actually way prefer the L'Oreal like 
True Match nude that tinted serum over this. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this and maybe somebody else will enjoy it. We have so many of the Purito BB Cream. These are old. I'm almost done with, which one is it? This one, Neutral Beige. So I'm going to finish this off and put it in my empties video. These two are so old and they're not the right shade. So I'm going to declutter these um, and I'm going to just throw them away because they're like two and a half years old. So they're probably gross by now. Um, normally I would give these away, but because they're so old and probably expired, I'm just going to throw them in the garbage can. And then we have the unopened version of the BB cream, which is pretty new. So I'm going to keep both of these and continue using them because I know I really like this formula, but sometimes I forget about it. And that's part of the reason I'm doing this declutter. So I can remember to use the things I love that exist in my collection. So I'm going to keep these as well. I've got the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator and I've got it in two different shades. We've got it in Fair, which is my fair shade and Light, which is my self tan shade I love this I'm going to keep it because it's beautiful and it's like $4.99 to $5.99 depending on where you get it and it comes with almost a full ounce and so I'm obsessed with it it's one of the things that I think makes my like my skin look so radiant and beautiful and just really youthful and glowy so we've got the Juvia's Place I am magic natural radiance foundation I also tried this in the foundation 5 series that went up a couple months ago I love this it was the first place winner I think it's beautiful 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 and the only thing I have against it is the smell, but I have sort of gotten used to the smell. It smells like fake watermelon in case you're wondering. I hate fake watermelon smells. I think they're disgusting, but I will say that I do really enjoy the formula of this foundation. It's my most full coverage foundation I have in my collection and it's also the dewiest and it is so beautiful on the skin. I've got this Tarte Shape Tape Cloud coverage. This has SPF 15 in it. I love this. It's like, it's sort of like the Juvia's Place one with a more matte leaning finish, but not totally matte and not flat or anything. I love this. Definitely going to keep it and use it. I really do enjoy it for the summertime as well. This is the Pacifica Kind Tint Tinted Serum. I actually tried this in last year's uh, Foundation 5 series. I really enjoy this. This is a full ounce and look how tiny this tube is. Like here's it compared to my hand. It's very, very tiny. I really do enjoy this and I actually also want to get a darker one for when I am self tanned. It does not have a lot of coverage at all, but this would be a perfect product to like mix with your sunscreen to like neutralize the white cast. And also I love it when I just want to look a little bit more put together, but like I have zero makeup on is pretty much what I use this for. And I do really enjoy it. It's also got like a matte finish, like satin matte. So it's not super dewy like most tinted serums are. Here I have the Merit Foundation Stick. I actually have this in two different colors. That has the lighter shade and I have the darker shade here. Does this thing want to come out? Like this thing almost just flew out. Um, I got this to like bronze with originally, but as you can see, it probably could go with my self tan skin. I like this. I, I did, but um, it's not the most shining product from here. I think a lot of other things from their line are just better. I don't find myself reaching for these a ton, so I'm going to declutter these and maybe somebody else will enjoy them. So then lastly in the foundation category, I've got the L'Oreal Age Perfect Tinted Balm. I haven't even opened this because I bought the wrong shade. This is 10 light, and as you can see, even just based on this, it's very warm. I think it could maybe work with my self-tan skin, so I might keep it to try it with that because I've heard that it is really pretty on the skin and I want to try it out, but I do think I remember their shade range being pretty crappy. But I do think I'm going to try it. It's completely unopened and I want to try it when it actually matches my skin so I can see how I feel about it and then go maybe get a lighter shade from there. Alright, so here we've got concealer and like any under eye brighteners or correctors, anything like that. So the first one I have here is my True Skin Concealer from Catrice. I told you that I loved this stuff. I've got three backups of my fair shade because that's normally what I am during most of the year and then I've got one of my self tan shade that by the way this is a neutral biscuit and these like my fair shade is in cool cashmere keeping all of these this is my all-time favorite concealer you can get on amazon or catrice's website it's seven dollars and so amazing great for sensitive skin too in case you're wondering this is the wet n wild incognito concealer i kept this during last year's declutter um and honestly I like it, but the smell gets to me so bad. It smells like witch hazel. I think it's a decent formula. I think the Catrice one is better, and you only have to pay like a few more dollars to get the Catrice one, so I would get that one over this one any day. I'm going to declutter this one, and yeah, I just don't think, I don't think I can handle the smell. It's really, really bad. Actually, that even smells kind of off. 
Okay, so this smells like it's gone bad, so I'm just gonna go actually throw it away. So then we've got the Flower Light Illusion Concealer. This was my favorite concealer for years. And then, pretty sure that they messed with the formula, and since then, it's not the same, and I have no desire to use it, and I tried to keep these and, like, use them, but I never, ever wanted to use them, so I never did, so I'm gonna just declutter them. It's just not the same as it used to be, sadly. The Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer, I got this in two shades because this shade, which is shade 3 Fair, is entirely too light. <laughs> uh, like, it's very ghostly, and the other shade is 6 Medium, which is... Almost right, but I didn't like this formula at all. I did not think that it did well under the eyes. It made my eyes look either really crepey or creasy, but also like super dry. It was weird. I don't know. It was also oily. Like, I just did not like this one at all. I mean, maybe not oily, but like super dewy and wet looking. So, I'm decluttering this, another Charlotte Tilbury product that has disappointed me, sadly. Then I've got the Shiseido Synchro Skin Concealer. This, everybody seems to really like. I actually am not the biggest fan of the wand, if you can sort of see. It's like almost like an hourglass. Very weird. I like that the packaging is really small. I think that's super convenient for travel. And I know so many people love this, and they say you can just like reset it, uh, like with your finger, and it, the creasing, any creasing that could have happened throughout the day will go away. I did not find this to be anything special, frankly. <laughs> I just think it's mediocre and I don't find myself ever reaching for it, so I'm decluttering this. This one I actually meant to get rid of in last year's declutter. This is the Cat Von, or no, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the KVD uh, Good Apple Full Coverage Concealer. This, their shades always pull so yellow to me, plus this one was like so light. I do not like this. I don't like anything from the Good Apple line. I think it's overpriced and just not right at all. I think the packaging is so cool though, but I'm decluttering this because I do not like it and have not used it in like a year. So then I've got this Milk Makeup Concealer and I know so many people love this. I don't think I got the right shade. I think the shade is too light and I think because of that I haven't really paid much attention to it. I also think that the bottle's kind of big for being a concealer. It's really fat, but I do hear that you can wear this as foundation, so I am tempted to get this in a darker shade, but I'm going to declutter this one because I just think that the shade, like when a concealer is too light, it really, really throws me off and I can't really focus that much on the formula. And because of that, every time I pull it out and I like wear it, I'm just distracted by how overly brightened up my under eyes are and I'm not loving that look. So this is the, what is this, Colfi? This is like an unheard of brand that Sephora sells. And I got this in not the last Sephora sale, but the one before that, I believe. And I do really like this concealer. I don't know if I would ever repurchase it, um, only because I do love the Catrice True Skin one, but I actually am going to keep it because I do like the formula a lot. I think it's really, really beautiful under the eyes. And why has nobody ever talked about this brand? At least nobody that I watch. And then we've got the One Size Concealer from Patrick Star. I don't like this concealer. It is way too full coverage for me. I actually have this in my tanner shade, so that's why it actually matches my skin pretty well. I got this in Miami, tried it out in Miami, and I just didn't think it lasted the way I, I was expecting it to with all the claims it makes and everybody who likes it claims it you know, does all these amazing things, and I just didn't think it did. I felt like it melted pretty easily in humidity. I thought it creased. I didn't think it did a good job of like you know, staying. I just thought it was really cakey too. For me, I love a medium coverage concealer because I feel like once you reach full coverage, a lot of times it, be it can become cakey and like emphasize everything I hate about my under eyes or any other area of my face I need to conceal. So I'm going to be decluttering this. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser. This is in ivory. This is just in a regular shade, not like the brightener. I repurchased this because this was my favorite concealer for years. I mean, years and years and years and years. <laughs> And when I repurchased it, I was extremely underwhelmed. I think they've messed with this formula, and I don't know what they've done to it, but I do not like it. I think that it can become really cakey, and I don't think it provides really any coverage, so I'm decluttering this for sure. But then I've got the Revlon Photo Ready Concealer. This is actually a stick concealer, and one of the only true stick concealers that I adore. It's so funny. I don't see a ton of people like talking about this, but Honestly, this provides a good medium coverage, doesn't make your under eyes look crepey, and is really easy to put on in the morning. Like, if you're in a rush, this is what I would suggest, so that way you can just kind of, like, swipe it under your eyes and dot it in with your fingers and you'll be good to go. I think it has, like, a really nice medium coverage and a beautiful finish, and it's not cakey at all, so I'm definitely keeping this. All right, so we have another Flower Beauty Concealer. This is the new one. This is the Get Real Serum Concealer. I don't know what is up with this shade, but it looks too peachy and it's way too light. So because of that, I think I get really distracted. I tried this 
initially like in a vlog a couple of months back and I do think I, I like the formula. I think it's nice. It's supposed to be smoothing. I don't really know if it does that because like I said, if a concealer is too light, I can't seem to just focus solely on the formula. It's not like a foundation for me where I don't know what it is, but for some reason when concealers are too light, it really throws me off. I'm going to declutter this one and maybe get a darker shade. This is ivory. Maybe I'll go down uh, in shades and just see if I can find a shade that matches better and then see if I like the formula from there. But this one is decluttered. This is the Haley's Beauty Rewind Concealer. This is in the shade Fairlight Neutral. I really, really like this. It's got a metal tip, which is just so cooling on the under eyes. I really, really like the packaging. I am almost done with this, so I'm gonna finish this up and I probably actually will repurchase it because I really do enjoy it. I don't think I like it as much as my Catrice True Skin, but I do think it's a beautiful formula. And I am almost done with it, like I said, so I wanna finish it up and put it in my next empties video. All right, so this is the Typology Tinted like Serum Concealer. This I also got in Type 2 Light, which is too dark for, well, it's almost too dark. Like, okay, so I only self tan to a certain point in my hand, so it looks funny. But this is very similar to like the foundation, or like, I'm sorry, the tinted serum foundation sort of product that I was just talking about in that it's very gel-like and so pretty. I hate the packaging on this because it oozes right out of the top and it like, I, it doesn't, you don't even need to squeeze it. It just starts oozing. So it is messy. I do want to get the lighter color and see if maybe I can use that one more frequently because this shade is very, very dark. But I really like it and I think I could use it when I'm self tan. We've got some Milani like under eye correctors. First we have the Milani Supercharged Brightening Under Eye Tint. That's this one. I have it in 120 Peach, which is I think the second lightest shade. So the middle shade. And then I've got the Milani Under Eye Brightener in the Conceal and Perfect line, and this is in Melon. Between the two of these, I like this one the most. Like, flying colors, this one wins. This one, I have a hard time reaching for. It's just not the same. I think it's funny that this one is newer, and you'd think this would be a better formula than this one, but so not the case. This one is blah, and this one is amazing. So I'm keeping this one and getting rid of this one. So this is the Flawless Brightening Concealer from e.l.f. It's got like this little brush applicator. I have not used this in so long. I really liked it for a minute, but I found other things I like more. And um, actually, is this is this empty? No, there's just a little bit left. Okay. I do think actually, okay, so you know what I'm gonna do? Because this is getting close to empty, I am going to keep this, use it up, put it in an empties video, and then most likely not repurchase it. That way I'm not being wasteful since it's pretty much almost empty. So then we've got this e.l.f. like corrector. This doesn't necessarily like have to be used as an under eye corrector. That's how I used it because it's the peach one. It's way too dark. I mean, it's so dark to where like if you put it under your concealer and try to like put your concealer over it, you can still see like that peachy tint and it dries so fast uh, that it just doesn't work very well. It's in the $4 line, so I feel like it maybe is lacking in quality. So I'm not, I don't love this. I'm gonna declutter it. I just don't like it at all, to be honest. All right, so then we've got the Rare Beauty Under Eye Brightener. This is in light medium, and I know this went viral on TikTok. I think the applicator is so creative, because like if you're tired, like the idea is that the metal would cool out down your under eyes. I wanted to love this because I love Selena Gomez and I generally love Rare Beauty as a brand, but I don't. I think it made my under eyes look worse and like I had worse like under eye circles than I actually did. So I'm going to declutter this. Maybe somebody else would like it. So this is the Ulta Beauty Under Eye Brightener. This, um, I actually really love the Ulta Beauty line and this is one of the items I love. So I'm going to keep this. It provides such nice neutralization of your under eyes without looking like you're wearing really any makeup. And I love that it comes in a pretty compact, like, package <laughs> um, tube. And I think that it would be perfect for travel. I think it comes in a couple of different colors and I love that. These are the Bobbi Brown um, under eye correctors. This is in, uh, I think it's just in, yeah, light bisque. And this is the stick version. And then this is the potted version, if I can get it open. And they are the same thing. And you know what, guys? I should declutter one of these. I really should, but I really like both of them. And no, you do not need them both, because they are essentially the same thing in different formats. 
but I'm gonna keep it because I like them a lot. More under eye correctors. Let's go ahead and do this one because this is my favorite. This is the Charlotte Tilbury under eye corrector. Uh, this is in, what is this, fair, medium, or just fair? Okay, so this is in fair, and I adore this. It's my all-time favorite under eye corrector. It's probably my all-time favorite product that Charlotte Tilbury sells, which is very not glamorous in comparison to other things she sells, but I love this and would never declutter it. So then we've got the Sigma, uh, what is this? Spectrum Color Correcting Duo. This is the light to medium one. I love this, very, very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury one. Uh, I think that it's beautiful. I love that you have two different tones to work with and it goes beautifully under the eyes. This is the Tarte Under Eye Corrector in light medium. Uh, very similar to both the Charlotte Tilbury and the Sigma and the Bobbi Brown. And you know what? I'm obsessed with under eye correctors. I really should get rid of them, but honestly, I don't want to because I like all of them, so I'm keeping this one too. I'm kind of tanking over here. I was doing such a good job, and now I'm like not doing so great. This is the Makeup Revolution Eye Bright Corrector. I haven't even opened this yet. I just got this, so I'm going to be keeping this to test it out. I love that it looks like it comes with a ton of product, and I really hope it competes with the higher-end ones I have because I love under-eye correctors, as you've seen. And this is the Pixi under-eye corrector. This one I do have a hard time getting out because of this small little opening. I think this is still sold. It doesn't come with a ton of product from what I can see. And this is the lightest shade, and it's a little... It, it smooths out fine, but in comparison to the other ones, it falls short, so I am going to declutter this one. I know my friend Melissa would probably love this because she's the one who... Um, recommended it to me in the first place and the formula is beautiful, but I have so many that match a little bit better All right, so let's go ahead and tackle primers real quick first This is the NYX plump right back primer. This is my favorite primer. It makes your makeup last forever And so I'm definitely keeping this and then we have the elf power grip primer. I Like this but I do think it clogs my pores a little bit and I don't think it works as well as the NYX plump right back one So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this because I do think that there are some people in my life who would really enjoy this and whose skin It probably would not bother. I have the most sensitive skin in the world. We've got the rare beauty pore diffusing primer I think I'm gonna keep this because I'm already halfway through it and honestly, this is like I think this is just the mini size I do really like this one. I don't think it's better or as good as the NYX one I just talked about but I am like halfway through it and I do think it's a pretty good primer so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up I don't know if I would ever repurchase it though I will say that so then we've got the essence fresh and fit awake primer I have kept this through so many declutters I really like it but it's like four years old now so I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it and you can't even buy it anymore because I'm pretty sure it's discontinued this is the essence skin loving sensitive primer I just got this haven't even really tried it so I'm gonna keep this one and see how I like it then I have like a sample size of this Tarte hydrating primer I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this and see if somebody else wants it because I don't have really any pull in me to like want to use this or try it out. It just came with a purchase. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this too. All right, so then we've got the Uoma by Sharon C. Prime to Glow Skin Perfecting Illuminating Primer. I really like this. It's actually a dupe for the Say, uh, what is this? The Glowy Super Gel. I love both of these. I'm gonna keep both of these, but they are like the same pretty much. This one is more expensive than this one. This one's like, I think four or five dollars. And this is the mini size and I think this is like 10 for the mini size. Uh, don't quote me on that. But I love these beautiful glowy primers that just make your makeup look so youthful. I'm really not getting much on the primer front. I'm just gonna be honest. This is the Burt's Bees, the Illuminizer. I've heard Kelly Gooch talk about this a ton of times. You can use it on top of your foundation too as a, like as a highlighter, but I'm, I use it as a primer and really love it like that. So I'm gonna keep this one too. And then no surprise here, this is the traditional elf poreless putty primer i just started it as you can see i'm not getting rid of this it's amazing i absolutely love it so i'm not going to get rid of that so yeah the the primers didn't get rid of a whole lot there but i uh, wanted to go ahead and do those all right i almost forgot about these primers but this is the makeup revolution blurring balm i'm going to get rid of this because the elf poreless putty primer is better and we got some more glowy primers first we've got the l'oreal lumi glotion love this Definitely keeping it. Really not much to say. It's beautiful. Then we've of course got the very famous e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. I have this in the lightest shade and then like the second or third lightest shade. I'm going to keep both of them. I do think they need to come out with an even broader shade range because I do find that the lightest shade of this, um, which I have right here, is 
really really warm and could even work on like my self tan skin and my self tan skin is like five or six shades darker than my regular skin tone so i do think they need to work on that but i'm definitely going to keep both of these all right so now we have powders that i use to set my face a lot of these are either loose powders or they are just powder foundation i think the only one that is not considered a powder foundation is this one from uh huda, huda beauty <laughs> But um, the other ones pretty much are, and that's how I set my entire face. So first we've got the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. I have it. In this one, you can see I love this. I'm almost done with it. This is in the shade uh, 205N, Light 205N. Love this keeping it. Then I also have it in the shade Light 210N. Uh, loving this keeping it. This is my self-tan shade. The way that it's most magical to me is just like as a way to set your foundation. I almost forgot to include this one. I couldn't find it for a second. But I uh, have two of the Essence Cover and Last. First, I have it in the shade Bright Beige, which is like my fair shade. Love this. A little less coverage than the e.l.f. camo one, but absolutely love it. So going to keep this one. And I also have it in the shade Neutral Suede, which is my self-tan shade, and I'm going to keep this one as well, obviously. So then we've got three of the uh, J.Cat Aquasurance Compact Foundation. I've, this is like the powder foundation, of course. This I actually do use as powder foundation. This is my favorite way to use this is as powder foundation. It's the best powder foundation I've ever tried. I feel like I'm saying the word foundation weird, but this is amazing. I love it. I've got it in ivory and natural. These two are in ivory, this first and second one. I'm just gonna back up, so I'm gonna keep that one. And then this one is my self tan shade in natural, keeping that one. <laughs> this part's not so interesting because I'm keeping Am I keeping all of these? No, I'm not. Okay, I'm not keeping all of them, but most of them. So this is the uh, Glowish by Hu Huda. Why can I not say this? This is the Glowish by Huda Beauty press powder. It's like a luminous powder. I have yet to try this. I bought it a while ago and just haven't tried it yet. I don't really know why because I find it very appealing. So I'm going to keep this one and try it out. Love the packaging. I think it's beautiful. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear Powder Foundation. This was my favorite powder foundation like to set my face before I tried the e.l.f. one. But I do still really like this and I'm going to keep it. This is in golden beige, which I think is actually... Yeah, this is my self-tan shade. So I'm going to keep this one too just in case I need it. I think it's wonderful. So then I've got two of the same L'Oreal Infallible Loose Setting Powder. I have it in the shade, both of them are in the shade Translucent Light Medium, but for some reason, this part right here is a different color on them. Like this one's closer to white and this one's like closer to like the shade of the powder itself. But I bought them at the same time and um, it's funny because I bought them at Walmart and this like literally has a sticker that says Rite Aid. But I'm gonna keep both of them. These, are, This is my absolute favorite powder to set all of my like smile lines under eyes with. I think it's wonderful and is so good for the southern heat. So these are the two I'm getting rid of. Let's talk about them. This is the House Labs powder. It's just their loose powder. And first of all, it's very deceiving because the cap is like huge. And then you open it and it's really short. I It had a sifter. I cut the sifter because I was tired of not being able to get the amount of powder I wanted. I don't even like the formula that much. I think it's really blurring. I don't think it does a good job of setting any concealer. And the color's off. Now that's on my, me. Well, it's translucent, but it's awfully yellow. I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera, but it is awfully yellow. And it just doesn't look right on my skin, like on, under my face. So I'm going to get rid of this one. This is the Bare Minerals uh, Original Mineral Veil Powder, like the translucent one. I tried this a couple times. I don't really like it. I don't think it's that great. I know that it's supposed to be like dusted on your face, whatever, swirl tap buff or whatever, but I don't like it for that or like setting anything. So I'm going to declutter this one too. All right. So we've got bronzers and contour products here. Um, I started off with powder bronzer. Then we like went all the way and then I got to like a powder contour, which is right here. And then we go into cream products and then like stick cream products and liquid products and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and jump in. So let's go ahead and start off with the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear Bronzer. I have this in two different shades. Uh, I've got it in fair and then light medium. Love these, will not be decluttering. These are some of my favorite bronzers of all time, not just like at the drugstore. So I'm definitely gonna be keeping both of these. Then we've got the House Labs bronzer, which the L'Oreal Infallible bronzer is a dupe for, in my opinion. And I am gonna keep this one, it is quite hefty. You don't necessarily need both, but I do like both the L'Oreal Infallible one and this one. And I really wanna just continue to use both of them because I do use them pretty interchangeably. And so I'm gonna keep this one too. Then we've got this L'Oreal Lumi Bronze. This is such a great 
cooler toned bronzer. It's not quite a contour and it's got a little bit of a glow. I love this. It's a brand new one. I especially love to use it like in the fall and winter time. I know we're not in that time right now, but um, I do love having it on hand. So I'm going to keep this one. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. This is the you know, powder one. It's huge. It's really, really nice. The Maybelline City Bronzer right here is like a shade dupe for it and a performance dupe for it. This is giant. I don't think it's a bad bronzer. I think it's fine, but I'm going to declutter it because frankly, I just don't really remember to ever use it and I haven't used it in a long time. So I want somebody else to get the chance to love it and use it. So we've got the Jaclyn Cosmetics Pressed Bronzer. This is the one that smells like coffee. I hate products that smell like food or drinks. It it kind of grosses me out. I can like smell it right now and it's like making me gag. I think this is a fine bronzer. I think for the how big the pan is, like there's this should be a bigger pan of bronzer. Do you see what I'm saying? Like there's so much edge. Plus the smell is nauseating. So I'm gonna declutter this one too. So then we've got this Winky Lux Coffee Bronzer. As you can tell by the name, this one also has a smell. I bought it in West Palm Beach last year when I was self tan and wanted to try this out just cause I like to try things out. Especially from Winky Lux cause you really don't hear a ton about them. I think this is fine. Smells better than the Jaclyn Cosmetics one. It kind of smells like hot chocolate powder before it turns into hot chocolate, but I still don't like it. Like, I just don't like the smell. I think the formula is fine, but I have other formulas in my collection that work perfectly too, and I have like them in different shades so I can use it when I self tan as well. So I'm gonna declutter this one. All right, so we've got this brand new City Bronzer from Maybelline. Uh, it really has not even been opened. So I'm gonna keep this one, one of the best bronzers overall. And I love the neutral undertone. So definitely gonna keep this one. All right, so I've got this Ulta Beauty Faux Glow Bronzer in two different shades. Uh, this is like, I have it in a lighter shade for when I'm like, you know, my natural color. And then I have it in a darker shade for when I'm self tanned. I cannot seem to get this open though. There we go. Um, these are great. I actually really, really love them and don't want to get rid of them because I love the formula of this bronzer so much. So I'm going to keep this one. All right. So then we've got this M Cosmetics bronzer. And honestly, I forgot about it until I was getting it out for this video. And it reminded me that I, I love this. Like I truly do. It's such a silky matte bronzer that goes on so smoothly. And so I'm definitely going to keep this one. So we've got this Milani one. It's actually broken. I'm going to declutter this. It's actually super old anyway. So I'm going to declutter this and I possibly will repurchase it in the future in its newer packaging and just get a new one. It is a beautiful, beautiful bronzer formula, very similar to the city bronzer formula with a little bit of a different undertone. And so I really enjoy it, but I am going to declutter it and actually throw it away because it's broken and probably expired. So then we've got the Sigma bronzer. I really, really enjoy this. I think that Sigma is slightly underrated somehow even though it's been around for a while, but I'm going to keep this because I think it's really pretty and it's pretty easy to pack because it's just, you know, it's not, I mean, to be honest, it's not any smaller than like the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear, but I do like this, so I am going to keep this one because I do think it's really, really pretty. Don't you worry. We're going to get to some that I'm going to declutter. This is the Tarte Park Avenue Princess Bronzer. I love the undertone of this. It's very similar to like a contour one like a contour shade, but not quite there. So I really do love this one and I'm going to keep it because I do think it's such a cold classic for a reason and I think it looks so beautiful on the skin. Then we've got this Haley's Resculpt Smoothing Contour Powder. This is my true, like my one true contour powder and I think it is beautiful. I really love Haley's Beauty. I would love for them to like come out with an eyeshadow palette or something because I really do love so many of their products. And um, I do really love this, so I am gonna keep it. And I'm still, honestly, it's pretty new to me still, so I still wanna like keep playing with it anyway. So this is the NARS Laguna Cream Bronzer. I'm gonna keep this one. Uh, if you've ever watched my channel at any point, you've probably heard me talk about this. It's my all-time favorite cream bronzer. It's beautiful and you really can't mess it up, so we're keeping that one. <laughs> All right, so this is the Say Sun Melt Cream Bronzer. I have it in light bronze. Um, I liked this, but then the NARS one came out and I decided I like that one way better and plenty of other ones in here that I like too. So I'm gonna declutter this one. It's a fine formula. I just think I have other ones that I like better. So this is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Limited Edition Bronzer in Nakey. It's the one that, you know, caused all types of controversy because of the shade range. I thought this was fine. Um, it's like two years old. I haven't really touched it because I like other cream bronzer formulas better. So I'm going to declutter this one. Then we have my second favorite cream bronzer. This is the Makeup Revolution cream bronzer. It's like $8. It's so, so good. I truly do love it. It's hard to mess up too. It's a little bit more pigmented like off the bat 
than the NARS one, so you have to go in with a lighter hand, but if you do happen to go in with a heavier hand by accident, you can fix it and it's no big deal. It's a little bit more emollient than the NARS one in that it's got a little bit more of a slit, but it does dry down to a beautiful like satin finish, so keeping this one. All right, so we've got the Makeup by Mario uh, Skin Enhancer. This is like a very light approach to cream bronzer. Why? That's kind of probably why it's called a skin enhancer. I do really like this one and do recommend it and will be keeping it because it's getting to that time where I'm gonna, I'm gonna be wearing cream bronzer like all the time. So I'm gonna keep this one. All right, so we've got these and they're dupes for each other. Um, like this is the Tower 28 cream bronzer that just came out. This is the Uoma by Sharon C. These are pretty much identical. I'm only gonna keep one because I really don't need to keep both. I've talked about them in my dupes video and I like demonstrated them next to each other. But I'm going to keep one, so I'm going to keep this one because even though they're the same, uh, I'm just going to be honest with you. It's because the lettering is purple, okay? Like, if they're the same, I'm going to go based on packaging. And since the packaging is basically the same, I'm going to go based on the color scheme. And this one just has, it has a prettier color scheme to me, slightly. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is the Tarte, uh, what is this? This Tarte Breezy Bronzer in Seychelles. This I bought in Miami last year, about a year ago. And they've since decided to discontinue it. It's not the perfect shade match for me anyway, so I was thinking about decluttering it anyway, but especially, I mean, I'm not one of those people that only declutters makeup that is discontinued because you can't get it, because I will use makeup that's decluttered and I will keep it, but it's not even a very great, great shade match, and the NARS one and the other cream ones that I kept are better, so I'm gonna declutter this one. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Bronzer. I really like this one. Um, of course it's in a huge pan because it wouldn't be Charlotte Tilbury if it wasn't in the most gigantic pan that you could never work through. I really do like this one. I don't think it's as easy to use as the NARS one, but I think it's better than the other ones I've decluttered and I really, I really do like the way it looks on this skin. It's just so pretty. So I am gonna keep this one. All right, so we've got the Danessa Myrix or Danessa Myrix uh, cream bronzer. This is the power bronzer. This was the first cream bronzer I ever got. I'm still in love with it. Absolutely love the formula. It's so, so good and so easy to use. It's especially great for beginners. So if you're looking to get into cream bronzers, this is the one I would recommend, especially if you've never really had any experience in them before. So I'm keeping this one because it's beautiful. So we've got the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Bronzer. I decluttered the regular version of this last year, and then I got this and I was like, you know what? This will probably be good. No, it's not. It fades. I don't like it. I don't think it's really great. I think... I think they could do a lot better, so I'm decluttering this. And it leaves like sparkles on your face, which isn't what I'm looking for. So then we've got the M Cosmetics So Soft Cream Bronzer in Terra. This blew up, I want to say like in 2021, so I got it. But okay, the shade is so dark. And it looks really pretty, like if you blend it out. But it takes a little bit to blend out, like on your skin. And like with a brush. And so... Though I think it's pretty, I don't think it like measures up to the other ones I love and have kept, so I'm gonna declutter this one. So we've got this e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand Contour. I'm keeping this to put in a speed reviews video, but uh, you know what? I'm gonna declutter this. I was gonna keep it to put in a speed reviews video, but let this just be said right now. I don't like this. I don't like the Charlotte Tilbury one that we're about to talk about. And I just, like, the, I actually don't mind the undertone. Like, I like that it's kind of gray so you can, you know, it can tr be a true contour. But it's messy packaging. The formula just isn't great to me. It's hard to blend out. It kind of sticks down where you put it before you have time to blend it out. So, for that reason, I'm going to get rid of it. So, this one keeps making its way into my declutters. I actually already decluttered it last year and pulled it from that box that I was shipping off to donate because so many different dupes came out and I wanted to try it. But to be honest, I don't like this. It's hard to blend out. It's overrated in my opinion. I think the tone is better than the e.l.f. one I just showed you like for a bronzer sort of thing or like a bronzer contour hybrid product. But it's hard to blend out. I don't like it. And I don't think it's as great as everybody says it is. So we're going to get rid of that. All right, so then we have the Rare Beauty Bronzer Stick in Happy Soul. This one I bought and since then they've actually released other shades that I think would be better. Look at like my hand looks so silly right now. But this is this one. This don't don't look at this down here. But um since then they've come out with a like a color that I think is going to work better. So I'm going to declutter this one and I actually ordered it during the Sephora sale. So I'm going to keep that one once it gets in and declutter this one. So then we've got the Merit Cream Bronzer Stick. This is beautiful. It's you know what? 
it's probably tied with the NARS Laguna one as my favorite because this one's completely different. It's a little bit more of a natural approach to a cream bronzer. It's beautiful. You can swipe it right on your skin and blend it out that way or go straight with a brush on here and then onto your face. And I love it. It's beautiful. I think so many people would like it and I'm definitely going to keep it. So this is the Ulta Beauty Oh My Glow Cream Bronzer. I do really like this. However, the shade is not perfect for me. Um, so I'm going to declutter it. I think it's really nice though. But this is the lightest shade and I just don't think it's quite right for me. So I'm going to declutter it and see if somebody else wants it. So then we have the Fenty Beauty Matchstick. I got this in the shade Amber and it is a true like contour shade. I'm running out of room on my hands. And I don't love this formula to be honest. So I'm going to declutter it. I just don't think that me getting another shade would be worth it because I'm not in love with the formula. So I'm going to declutter this. Maybe somebody else will like it. All right, so here we are with all of the blush I have. Uh, I went from being somebody who like hated blush to being somebody who has way too much. So I'm going to start with powder, then we're going to kind of go into cream, and we're going to go into like liquid. So let's start off with this one. This is one that I hear like nobody talk about. This is the Alme or Alme Healthy Hue Blush. I think this is beautiful i love this like can you see that that's gorgeous so i think this is underrated and i love it i'm going to keep it all right so then i have this number seven um, matte powder blusher in honey i got this in new york and i do think it is so beautiful it's such a natural blush and i love it and i'm definitely going to keep it all right so then i've got two of these these are the ulta beauty mineral blushes i have one that's like it's almost like luminous this is in tiger lily and i do truly love this so much i can't even tell if you can tell if you can see that um i love this one and then i have it in the shade stargazer which is more of like a matte fall shade and i'm gonna be honest with you these are totally underrated and I'm going to keep both of them because they are so gorgeous. All right, so this is the Milani, uh, just the p rose powder blush. I do love this. This is in Romantic Rose. It's so pretty. And I also picked this one up in New York because I know that it's been a cult favorite for years and I haven't really tried it. So I wanted to pick it up and I do love it. I think it's gorgeous and I am going to be keeping this. Once again, I promise that I'm going to be decluttering some. So this is another one I got in New York. I don't know why I went blush crazy when I was in New York City, but I wanted to try this out because I've heard Angie from Hot and Flashy talk about this. This is the Age Perfect Radiant Satin Blush from L'Oreal, and it's in the shade Rosewood. I think it's really pretty. I haven't even cracked the seal on this yet, and so I'm excited to try this out because I love so many things from L'Oreal. So then I've got this Bare Minerals Bronzer. This is in Kiss of Pink. I've heard so many people talk about this. And honestly, I really don't even know how I feel about it. Like, I see so many people talk about how beautiful it is. But I don't really know my feelings. So I want to keep trying it out and see if I think it's worth anything from there. Because I just really don't know how I feel. Like, I know it's such a cult classic and cult favorite. And I just don't know. So then I've got two of the Tarte blushes. I have it in Risqué and Seduce. So this is Risqué. Almost kind of like a neutral-ish pinky. And then this is Seduce, which is, I think, a little bit darker. Why can't I not get this open? There we go. It's a little bit darker. I haven't played with these much. I feel like I'm not doing a very good job on decluttering the blushes. <laughs> But I haven't played with these a lot, so I'm going to keep both of these because I, I do think they're pretty and I know so many people like them. And I really haven't played with them very much. Oh my gosh, I really need to start decluttering and I haven't gotten there yet. So this is the Essence Pure Nude Bl Baked Blush. I have it in Shimmery Rose and Goldie Cassis. Um, this one I got like for the cold girl makeup look in the winter. And this one I got because I knew I'd wear it a lot. I do love this. I love this formula so much. I think it's beautiful. I think both of the colors are beautiful. So I'm going to keep both of them. I need to declutter stuff. <laughs> so then we've got the Essence, the blush. I've got it in Bespoke, which is like almost like a bronzer. This is kind of the way that I introduced myself to blush was by going a more neutral bronzer-esque sort of way or approach into blush. And then I started going into like more blush colors. And this is in the shade Befitting. These are great. They're like, I don't know, two, three bucks or something like that. And they're beautiful. Oh, and I do love them. So I'm going to keep them. I'm sorry. So this is the Maybelline Fit Me, just regular blush. Um, This I'm decluttering because it doesn't even <laughs> show up on my skin. I bought it because I was like, that's such a nice neutral shade, but it's so neutral that it doesn't show up. So I'm going to declutter it. We finally got rid of one, guys. I'm proud of me, aren't you? <laughs> All right. So this one I won't be getting rid of because it's so beautiful. This is the Heaven's Glow blush in baroque from essence from essence from m cosmetics and it's like a 
like a shimmery blush or like a blush topper and I'm obsessed with it. I love it. Persona Super Blush in Caramel. And this is beautiful. I do really love it. Um, and I do think it's like mauve -y. Like I've just, I've heard people describe it as almost like peachy, but I disagree. I feel like it's more of a mauve color. So I do really like this and I do want to keep it. It's such a good like travel size too. Like that's what I love about like the essences, the blush and the persona and like, where are they? The Ulta mineral blushes. They're so small. They're so easy to travel with. So we've got some Mac blushes. And so first I've got the Blush Baby Sheer Tone Blush. This one I've used a little bit, haven't been super impressed with, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it along. I just think it's like an okay blush. I don't think it's bad or anything like that, but it's just okay. So then we've got the MAC Mineralize Blushes, and I have this one in Humor Me, which is, oh, that's right. I never can get these open. Okay, there we go. It's like... A little bit more of a bronzer shade and frankly wasn't super impressed with these um and I never can get them open I don't even want to try to get this one open because I don't want to like dig my nail in it so I'm gonna get rid of these declare these see if somebody else wants them um, by the way the other shade is in sweet enough and I'm not gonna open it like I say because I'm really afraid I'm gonna like damage it but um yeah they're just not they're not really show stopping so I'm gonna pass them along. So then I've got the MAC Blush Please Glow Play Blush. So this is, I feel like this is almost like a cream to powder. And this is my favorite blush out of all the MAC ones that I tried. And so I'm gonna be keeping this one. As you can see, it looks, I have so many swatches on my hand. It's this one right here, <laughs> right here. Um, as you can see, it's really, really pretty. I do really enjoy it. And I like that it's like a softer approach to cream blush because it almost dries down and it makes it really easy to apply and work with. So I'm gonna keep this one. These are the e.l.f. Uh, Bite Size Face Duos. This I have in Spice Apple, which is this one right here. And what is this one? I don't even know what this one is. Okay, so I don't know what this one is. <laughs> I can't find it, but um, I do really like these. I, uh, I don't even think I've opened this one. Yeah, I haven't opened this one. I like the formula and um, I do really like this formula so but i think i'm only gonna keep one and which one do i want to keep so because spiced apple is not open i think i'm gonna declutter it and let somebody else have it and i'm gonna keep this one that i can't find the name of so just like the cream bronzer version of this situation um i'm going to keep only one and it's gonna be the tower 21 because once again the lettering is so pretty these are the exact same though this is the uoma by sharon c which you can get at walmart and it's an exact dupe. So I've got two of the Milani Cheek Kiss blushes. Um, they're cream blushes. I've got Nude Kiss and Merlot Moment. So this one I bought to be more of a fall shade and it's gorgeous and I do love it very much. And this one is more neutral. Um, so I'm gonna keep both of these because this is an excellent cream blush formula and I love that it's drugstore. So we've got this LYS High Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush. I didn't think that this was anything special. Uh, I've used it a few times and didn't love the way it worked with my foundation. I always felt like it kind of picked it up a little bit. So I'm going to declutter it because I just have better ones. All right, so this is the Lip and Cheek Glow in the Pillow Talk collection from Charlotte Tilbury. So it's like a blush slash you can put it on your lips too. I only use it as blush. I love it. It is so beautiful. And so I'm going to keep it. It's one of the Charlotte Tilbury products that I think is actually worth it. And then I've got the Danessa Myricks or Danessa Mirix cream blush in Rose in Brunch. This is from the Yummy Skin Collection. Uh, this came out pretty recently and I do really enjoy it. I'm going to keep this because I do really love it and I think it's a standout formula. This is the About Face cream blush in Get Some. Okay, it's really aggressive. This is Halsey's brand, and I bought this because I was like, you know what, that'll be really pretty. Well, it picks up so much of my foundation and anything that I'm wearing underneath, and so I hate it that I didn't like it because I was really looking forward to it, but I'm going to declutter it. And also, I find the packaging to be kind of bulky. All right, so then I've got this Rose Ink Cream Blush. This is in Camellia. And I really had high hopes for it, but it's starting to develop a smell. And I've heard that about some other rose ink products. So I'm going to just throw this away because, yeah, it's just starting to smell a little weird. I've only had it for like six months. All right, so this is the Honest Beauty Cream Cheek and Lip Color. I've heard people either love this or don't really like it at all. I'm one of the people who don't really like it at all. I feel like it's stiff. It's hard to work with. I think that, I don't know if you can tell, but like... Mm, yeah the packaging in and of itself is like very 
I don't know, it's not very sturdy. And so I'm, excuse me while I wipe my hands. So I'm going to declutter this because I, I just don't like it very much. So we've got the AF94, which is the Walmart version of like About Face. It's their sister brand. And this is the Cream Blush in Soft Smile. I thought this was just mediocre. Don't love it, don't hate it, don't really like to use it because I just don't think it's a standout formula, so we're gonna declutter it. All right, so we've got two of the Rare Beauty blushes. I've got it in Encourage and Hope. I'm gonna keep both of these because I think these. this is such a beautiful formula. It's one of the only blushes that I actually enjoy the pure pigment on. I'm usually not big into like blushes being super pigmented on the first application, but I feel like you can work with this, so that doesn't really bother me, so I'm going to keep both of these. So this is the original formula of the M Cosmetics Cream Blush. It's got the worst packaging in the world. It's so cute, and then like it's got like this dropper thing that doesn't even drop anything, and if it does, it's like that much. I think they have reformulated this. This one was a slimy, oily mess that picked up my foundation, and I'm curious to see how the new formula is, but I don't know how curious I am. So I don't know if I'm going to try it, but regardless, I'm decluttering this because this is terrible. <laughs> so this is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand. I like this okay. I think it's very similar to the whole situation with the contour version of this, where it's kind of hard to blend. It sticks down right where you put it, or it blends right away if you blend it right away. It doesn't have a lock on here like the Charlotte Tilbury one does. I will give the Charlotte Tilbury one credit there. It has a lock. So because it doesn't have a lock, it kind of oozes all over the place and it's messy. So I'm going to declutter this. All right, so this is the Kaja, what is this? The Whipped Dream. So this one, I, it's like, what is this for again? This is for, I think, your eyes and your face. So it's not for your lips. Don't do what I did and put it on your lips and be like, this looks terrible on my lips because <laughs> it's not for that. It's a beautiful whipped liquid blush is usually how I use it and I could use it on my eyes. I've used it like that a couple of times but I do think it's best as a liquid blush and so I'm going to keep it. I think it's really, really pretty. So this is the Typology Tinted Balm Dusty Pink. This is like their liquid blush. This was something that I thought I was really going to like and I don't. It's got a gel formula which I think is really pretty. I hate the packaging. Same thing as a concealer. It like oozes everywhere but it's so emollient and it like picks up everything you're wearing underneath. Foundation, like forget it. It's going to take it off. So... I'm going to declutter it. All right, so we're almost done, but first we're going to do highlighters, and then we're going to get on to, like, combination, like, palettes. First, let's do highlighter. So this is the Sigma highlighter. This is in Savannah. It's kind of like a gold champagne, but I do really enjoy it. I almost am looking into, like, a pinkier shade, too, and if that's the case, I'll probably declutter this one, but I do really like the formula, so I'm going to keep it for now. All right, so then we've got some Essence highlighters. Let's first talk about the highlighter. It's what it's called. First, we've got this in the shade Mesmerizing, which is like a shade I use when I'm like fairer. I think it's really pretty. It's that one right there. And then we've got it in the shade Sun Showers, which is my like self-tanner version. And I don't know if I need both of these because I have the pure nude one. I love this formula, but I think I'm going to get rid of the lighter one, which is Mesmerizing. And I'm going to keep Sun Showers and then the pure nude one right here, which is like more for fair, fair skin, I'm gonna keep. Cause I like this one better than I like mesmerizing. I like the tone of this one better. And then this only comes in one color. And so I'll keep the other, the highlighter in Sun Showers, which is the darker shade. So let's talk about these Wet n Wild Mega Glow highlighting powders. This is, this is in the shade Precious Petals. So it's very beautiful, but it's a little bit too punchy for me for right now. And this is in a very gold shade. And this is in the shade Golden Flower Crown, very appropriate name. I'm gonna declutter both of these because they're more 2016 highlighter vibes than I prefer right now. So I'm gonna declutter both of these. All right, so then I've got this Revlon Skin Lights. Uh, this is in Daybreak Glimmer. I love this. It's one of my favorite highlighters for when I'm self-tanned and I want a punch, but not a glittery punch, just a glow punch. So this is beautiful and I'm gonna keep it. All right, so then we've got this Catrice More Than a Glow Highlighter. It's in the shade Supreme Rose Beam. Ooh, it's got like a dent in it. That means I love it. So this one I love for when I'm fair. It's beautiful and it's a little bit punchier if you go in with a denser brush and of course you can make it a little bit more diffused if you go in with like a fluffier brush. So I love this one. I will be keeping it because I think it is 
beautiful. So then we've got this About Face uh, Light Lock Powder, and this is in Stars on Fire. This is their powder highlighter. This one is really, truly for when I'm self-tanned, like the MAC self-tan that I go. And it is because of that, I keep it for that. I don't wear it all the time, and I do enjoy it on my eyes too, so I'm gonna keep that one. So this is Sunscape Highlighter, and this is from M Cosmetics. This is in the shade Clarity. This is beautiful, okay? I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep this one too. Let's just move on. Let's start getting to ones that I'm gonna declare here in a second. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics. This one is like the cream to powder one she came out with a couple years ago. It's really pretty, but I never, ever, ever wear it. I bought it for my self-tan shade, and though I think it's beautiful, I think it does have a hard time kind of blending because she calls it like a putty formula. And though it swatches beautifully, I just don't really reach for it because it kind of picks up the products underneath. So I'm gonna declutter this one. So then we've got, these are actually dupes for each other. So let's talk about them real quick. This is the Fenty Kilowatt Highlighter. This is in the lightest version. I love it. And this is the dupe I have for, which is the NYX Born to Glow. This one is a little bit punchier in the NYX and I love wearing this on my eyes. It is, gosh, isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous. I know this sounds counterintuitive <laughs> and I don't know what to say. But I'm going to keep both of these because I do really enjoy them. I feel like I'm not doing a good job right here. I feel like I was doing a better job earlier. But I do really enjoy both of them and use them both frequently, even though they're very similar to each other. So this is the Glodiant Makeup Palette. This is like a highlighter palette. Um, I just want to do this once because I never got to do that. Oh, it comes off like lighter than I was expecting. This is really pretty. Who is this by? This is by, oh yeah, Touch and Soul. I keep this every declutter and rarely ever use it. And so because of that, I'm going to go ahead and declutter it because I normally use it. All right, so this is the Undone Nonzer. Is that what that, it says Nonzer. Okay. It's a four in one highlighting palette. So it comes with this beautiful like purple and it is such a pretty purple. And I was like, you know what? I'll use it on my eyes. Gosh, that is pretty, isn't it? But you know what? The thing is, is every time I'm like, oh, I'll use it on my eyes and I never do like, I just, I don't want to keep doing that, so I'm going to declare this. This is the J Cat Lux Pro Powder Pearl Luminizer. This is like a Lit From Within highlighter, and okay, I do think this is pretty. However, it is so messy, and every time I use it, I don't want to use it again because it's so messy. So I'm going to declutter it because, frankly, the packaging, though you get so much and probably never run out of this in your lifetime, I wish it were better executed to keep that amount of product without having such a mess. So then we've got like these balms, uh, like highlighter balms. This is the Flower Day Glow. This is such a beautiful like lit from within. I love this. It is so pretty. It doesn't really have a ton of sparkle or anything, but it looks so good on your skin to either like prime for more highlighter or just to have a lit from within look. So I'm gonna keep this one. This one is a sad, sad loss. I'm not decluttering it, but I mean a loss to like the makeup industry. It's from Winky Lux and it's their highlighting balm. I think that's what it's, yeah, strobing balm. This is in Radiant Pink. They also had it in like bubbles or something. I bought this and then apparently it's been discontinued for who knows what reason. It's beautiful. It's like one of my favorite highlighters of all time. And it, they decluttered it, or they decluttered it. <laughs> they discontinued it, and I am not decluttering it, especially because they discontinued it. So this is the About Face Light Lock like Stick Highlighter. I wanna get this in a lighter shade too. This I wear when I have a self tan going on, and it looks so beautiful. It is so easy to use. One of my favorite cream formulas of all time, and I do love it. It's probably my favorite about face product ever. So this is the uh, Wet n Wild Makeup Stick Highlight. This one I bought and like never use. It's fine, it, it's fine, but it's almost a little too icy, so I'm gonna declutter this one. So then we've got this About Face Light Lock Fluid. This one comes in a dropper, and I have this in like Greek Tragedy, I think is what it's called. Is that what it's called? No, this is shaken or stirred, so sorry guys. It's golden and I use it when I have a self tan and I love to use it on my body. And so I am gonna keep it. I think it's really beautiful. This is the M Cosmetics Moonbeam. Like, I don't know, it's like a cushion highlighter. I never use this, okay? And it's like, it's not very friendly. Like, I feel like I wanna use it. And then every time I do, it's like messy. And I just, I'm kinda underwhelmed with it, so. 
I'm gonna declutter it. So this is another Jaclyn Cosmetics like thing that came out a couple years ago. And this is the liquid highlighter and high beams. I got this to put all over my body. I haven't used it since I did that like video and was testing it for that video. Cause I just, I don't know, like I kind of think that Jaclyn Cosmetics is a little behind the times and I find other products I like so much more. I don't think it's bad, I just don't think it's special. So I'm gonna declutter it. All right, so then we've got the Halo Glow Beauty Wand Highlighter. This is the one from the Halo Glow Beauty Wand line that I really enjoy, but they sent me the wrong shade. This is liquid gold, and it might actually work now with me being, no, no, it probably wouldn't. Well, I don't know. Being self tanned, it might work. I wanna get the lightest shade because I think I'll like that one more, but I am gonna keep this one in case it does work with my self tanner. And I think that this is such a beautiful formula and it works so nicely, it blends in so easily and it does not stick down like the contour and blush do from this line. It's definitely the standout product. So this is the Conceal and Perfect Highlighter um, from Milani. It's the lightest highlighter and it's like almost the same color as the one I just put down. Maybe not the exact same color, but it's in the same family and not a whole lot lighter, in my opinion. So I'm gonna declutter this one because I just don't, I don't really think it's a special formula. Um, I think that the e.l.f. one is better. So lastly, this is the e.l.f. This doesn't even have any like name. This is like some sort of luminizer. Ooh, it just came out with like liquid. This one, ooh. Ooh, that's pretty, okay? It almost looks like this one could be used as a primer or a highlighter. I haven't played with this one a ton, so I do want to keep it because I think it's so plain. Look how plain this packaging is. I think I could like this, and I don't really know how I feel about it, so I think I'm going to keep it. So we're on the last highlighters. This is the Rare Beauty Highlighter. This is in the shade Exhilarate, and I think this is really pretty. Um, it's very punchy, but I actually, you know what's funny is I love this on my eyes. I think it's good on my face, but I love it on my eyes, so I am going to keep it. And then this is the Catrice Sungasm highlighter. You can never run through this. It's huge, <laughs> but it's beautiful. And this is one of my favorite highlighters for a punch or when I'm self-tanned. I think you could really diffuse this out and make it look so glowy and like sun-kissed. So I'm going to keep this one too. All right, so we're on the final stretch of this episode. So this is the She Glam Stereo Face Palette. I've had this for like, I don't know, three or four years. It's really pretty, but I'm not into palettes right now. Like I'm going to be honest, the only one I really use, and I haven't even used this one in like a year, is this shade Queen of Ice. It's like a very subtle highlighter, and that's what the Catrice pure nude highlighters like. So I'm gonna declutter this one. And plus I have heard that like She Glam's associated with like Shein, which is lacking morals. So anyway, so now I've got this BH Cosmetics Belgian Waffle Palette. I don't even know if this is still available or if BH Cosmetics still exists, but this is basically like a highlighter and bronzer palette. I was into highlighter and bronzer palettes for a while. I mean, look how beautiful that is. Beautiful, haven't used this though in forever and don't really see myself using palettes like this anymore, so I'm gonna get rid of it. You know what, let's just hit these both. These are both palettes, the Roxy palette, the collaboration with Makeup Revolution. Beautiful, but honestly, never ever reach for it, so going to get rid of it, not into palettes. And this is the Rach Loves Pixie like uh, collaboration. This is a beautiful shade, this like purple. Once again, would look beautiful on the eyes but um, I don't use it. I don't use it at all. So we're getting rid of that one. So then I've got this Natasha Denona Dream Cheek, Trio, Dream Cheek Trio. <laughs> this is a cream blush, cream highlighter, and a powder highlighter. I actually love this. It's my favorite product I've ever tried from Natasha Denona, which is hilarious. I know she's known for her eyeshadows, and I think they're way overrated. This, on the other hand, is wonderful, and I do want to keep it. So then we've got this Ulta Beauty 3-in-1 Cheek Palette. This has a bronzer over here, a blush over here, and like a pretty subtle highlight up here. So pretty. It reminds me of the Essence Pure Nude, though, so I don't think I need both. And frankly, I don't really use these very much, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. Then we've got the Ulta Beauty Cheek Squad Cream Face Palette. This has a blush, a cream highlighter, and a cream bronzer. This bronzer, bronzer. This is pretty new. I do really enjoy this. I think it's beautiful. So I am gonna keep this. I think it's so easy to work with. Let's talk about these. These are the Essence Kissed by the Light, uh, like one of these illuminating powders. So this one's like a bronzer slash very dark blush and highlighter combo. I love to just swirl my brush in there and just like put it all over my face for like a one and done look. Um, 
And so I love that one. And I do love this one for, it's got a little bit more of a blush tone to it. This is in Star Kiss and the other one is in Sun Kissed. And I love both of these. They're great to like get every basic done. Like you got your brush, bronzer, and highlight. You just swirl it all together and there you go. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics like bronzer and blush duo. This is in the lightest, which I thought was really pretty, but they don't show up on your skin. So I'm gonna get rid of them. Also, this packaging is so bulky. So this is a mini of the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. I wouldn't call this a bronzer. I would really call it more of like a contour shade. Uh, I never use this. It's the mini. I bought it to like try out for like a Charlotte Tilbury video where I find dupes for everything. And this one was, I mean, it's fine but it's not like outstanding. So we're decluttering that. Then we've got the A Revolution Relove by Revolution Contour Palette. Blush, highlighter, and bronzer. The blush is so pretty, I love it. Highlighter, so pretty. Contour, I called it a bronzer, but so pretty. I mean, I don't know if that swatches as well. Well, it's okay. Uh, I love this. It's like $2.98 and totally worth it. All right, so this is everything I'm keeping and this is everything I'm getting rid of. I think it's about half. Um, as you can see, some of them are in containers because I wanted to go ahead and section them off. And some of them aren't because I need to like, you know, flip out some containers from other areas I'm gonna declutter. But I do think that I did a pretty good job. And I did want to point out the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder and the Maybelline Superstay Foundation, like powder foundation, were stuck and I did not include them by accident. But I am keeping both of them because I do enjoy them. And uh, yeah. I think this is pretty good. I think I did a pretty good job. I'm excited to like put these in all in containers and I'm excited to like either give these away or donate them so somebody else can enjoy them. I think that my drawer over there, it is such a mess in here, but I think my drawers in that dresser are going to thank me because I'm taking like almost or at least half the weight. So I think I did a pretty good job. I'm pretty proud of myself. I feel like I did a pretty good job getting rid of some face stuff. I feel like I got close to the amount of what I was wanting to get rid of and so I'm excited to continue throughout the series and get rid of even more of my makeup. And by get rid of, I mean that I'll be either giving it away to family members or friends or donating it, like, because it's gently used. I would never give away any of the stuff that is, like, expired or pretty much almost empty. So, yeah, but I am I feel like I did a pretty good job. I hope you guys do too. I'm going to be doing two more declutter videos which are going to cover eyes and then I'm going to do another one that covers lips and that'll finish us off. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit the notification bell down below and subscribe if you're not already. I'm excited to continue this declutter series with you and I hope you guys are too. For now, that is it. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!